Hello and welcome back to Crazy Dove Studio. Today we will talk about automatic multi-streaming feature available with cloning operation in Networker. In the last video, we tried to understand about cloning and its functionalities. We also learned about RPS, which is Recover Pipe to Save feature that allows multiple save sets to be cloned by a single clone operation. Today we will look at another feature that Networker's cloning functionality provides us. This is Automatic Multi-Streaming, also known as AMS. Automatic Multi-Streaming is a new feature in Networker 19 that allows save sets to split into multiple streams and then stream them parallelly via replication to the data domain. Let's look at a few features or behavior of uh, automatic multi-streaming. So automatic multi-streaming is disabled by default. Now when you look at how we enable it, you will see that this is not a straightforward operation or it's not available on the UI. So it is something that has to be done manually going into the configuration on the network server itself. It can be enabled only for data domain to data domain replication, which means that if you want to use automatic multi-streaming on AMS during cloning, you cannot apply this to any other um, uh, cloning operation for a different backend device, only for a data domain. Uh, AMS applies only for files larger than 3.5 gigs. Uh, it will basically split it into multiple pieces of 2GB and replicate them using uh, DDR managed file replication technology. Most important thing to keep in mind, AMS does not support VBA, VProxy, Hyper-V, block based backup and synthetic full backups to be cloned. So the only exception is Microsoft NMM Exchange module save sets where AMS, even though it uses BB, um, even though it uses block-based backup and synthetic full, it will still support it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how to enable AMS on your backup server. For this, we will have to hop on to our backup server, which is in our case, NW Linux. Uh, if you have already done this, so in Networker lately, most of the fine-tuned configuration that is not available directly on the UI is available or has to be done in the location NSR debug. So if you see now, there are no files here. And now let's go ahead and create a new file in here for enabling AMS. So create a file with the name NSR clone config. So NSR clone config is a fine tuning parameter file that you can keep in here. So there are a number of parameters that are available. Uh, these parameter details are provided in the administrator's guide. So you can go to the network administrator's guide, search for NSR clone config, and you should be able to find that there. Uh, next, let's go ahead and enable by using the keyword MS enabled, yes. Then let's say quit. And now your system is ready to take in or to use AMS for any clone operation that is about 3.5 kit. So let's go ahead and try to find a, a backup that we can use to test this uh, operation. So let's, let's. Okay, let's go ahead and get a save set that we can use for our clone. So we'll go for UT minus Q. We'll look for copies which are less than two. And let's get the information. Society clone ID some size. Let's try to get it in gigs. We'll say some flags to see that we have valid save sets. 
No save sets. Oh, sorry. Okay, much better. So we have. We'll pick only the one with the 12 GB size and it is browsable, so we'll pick this up. Let's go ahead and clear the screen and initiate the clone using the NSR clone command minus B I have the clone pool here let's go ahead and put that in let's increase the verbosity a little so that we can see the details so here you will see that it is started cloning and let's quickly jump on and look at the save sets So you cannot see the sessions here. Uh, do, 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 do. So let's try to open up another session. I hope I get to it before. My clone completes. Okay, DD boost, file replication show, active, all. All right. So you see that there are one, two, three, four, five sessions created and you will see the sizes. I think this should be the size. So it's around two gigs each. Uh, it's hard to see it here because it's not actually doing the session splitting here. The session splitting is happening between the two data domains during the replication. So there you have it. All right, so now that we have seen how to use it, you also need to consider as to when to use it because this is not kind of a feature that you should be using just blindly or uh, just under the assumption that this makes the performance better and you have to run it all the time. Uh, you will have to keep in mind that every session or every clone operation that uses AMS is also creating multiple sessions with the data domain. That means that every data domain which has a specific, uh, you know, fixed amount of or uh, capacity of sessions. So this is going to use most of the capacity. So if in case you have a data domain or an environment which is very busy and the data domain is uh, or usually hit with a lot of backups and clones and recoveries then when you're doing this you're actually multiplying every save set or backup session into the number of streams that you're generating so this might choke uh, the sessions uh, or the session utilization on the data domain mainly uh, when you have a large environment you have to keep in mind that uh, or consider the number of sessions that you're creating when you're designing or uh, setting up the backups or cloning operation on networker. So usually you can use this whenever, for example, you have a cloning session that usually has larger data and takes longer time, which usually forces you or uh, forces the backup to uh, go beyond your backup window and if you want to like keep it inside the backup window you can make use of this but again be wary of the consequences of using this uh, particular option 
the other thing uh, you have to do keep in mind is that since there are multiple streams going on that means that the bandwidth utilization is going to drastically increase uh, when you are using AMS so again keep uh, your cloning throughput limitation in mind uh, and your network utilization uh, you know limitation in mind when you are designing or uh, setting up AMS Thanks for sticking with me till the end of this video. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, share it with our community in the comment section below, or you can drop me a message at my Twitter account. I will see you on another video. Goodbye.